church of Jesus when I heard that said, yeah, we got on, we got man. some rivers to cross, <laughs> but it's man. one more one we're going to cross, yeah. and that's our transformation from where we won't have no more problems. All right. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Lord. When I think about one more river, I'm going to change from this here, and they said, you got to remember, we're in the flush now, but when we get over there, it won't be no flush. Won't be no buddy, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be all about Jesus yeah. every day of our life. Yeah. Let you know that you're going to have some things on this. He didn't leave us uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, as I sit there and I've been going all week, all I can think about is that uh, yeah, when <clears throat> Reverend Gibson passed, we had a, a, a thing where we started over back talking about, you know, when your leader passes on and... Uh, the Bible gives you a, a section for everything that's going to happen in your life. Right. It's in that Bible. The answer is in that Bible. Right. And so I thank God, you know, as I was thinking about how when he, when the last conversation I had, I heard him say, you know, uh, oh, are you going to be at church Sunday? <laughs> and I said to him, I said, he always said, oh, I know you're going to be there, you know. And I said to him, I said, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I just got back from California. Mm -hmm. So blessed. You know, right. God let me travel. When man said, you can't travel. Yeah. And I thought, he said, so, well, uh, I was just wondering if you're going to be there. I said, no. He said, everybody at the church got um, COVID except. And he said, mm -hmm. Brother Michael. And, and I said, really? He said, well, ain't nobody coming, but you might not have. But I said, I'm not going to be there. I said, you didn't hear me. I said, we travel. And something hit me. Mm -hmm. So I said, we got a little cold or something, and we're going to stay home. Right. And uh, so I thank God, you know, if you, if, if, when you hear what the Lord said, you don't care about what other people say. Amen. You're Amen. a noble. Amen. When you're at home <coughs> and you can't go and do no more, God knows. It. Yeah. They'll come up with all. And in my message, today I, I thought it was going to be, what must I do to be saved? All right. Because God is calling for people that to believe in what he said, mm. not what man said, but what he said. Because if you're not in line with God's word, then you're not in line with God. All right. So I thank God, you know, as I went through it, and I, and I said to a lot of people going around saying they saved, and they really not. And say, how do you, how can you find out how to be saved? Mm. I said, search the scripture. And I, and, and, and I got around, I said, thank God, you know, I keep thinking about he been so good to me. Amen. And so I said, Heavenly Father, what's the first thing that uh, came to my mind when they said, you must be saved? And I said, Lord said, you ask me what you don't have. The lady that, the, the message we had this morning, ask. Mm. You want some ask God. Mm. Yeah, he knows, but ask him. Why? Because he told you. When you ask, you stand and not give it over to you. I want you to take full control. <coughs> So I am listening to, and I started praying, and and as I was praying, this here message that we got, well, I guess it was like the third meeting of the House of Prayer, and I'm going to today, Joshua 22. And some people want to argue with Joshua, eh? Joshua, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> they know, but they just want to. Start a little conflict over word. You don't know how to find it. Just look out for the find and plus the whole thing. Because you can't miss it if you go in there and you know how to read your Bible and you'll know where it's coming from. Joshua 22. Heavenly Father, we come saying thank you for your word. Ask you to clear our minds. Align our hearts with your word, that we be doers of the word. We come acknowledging we can't do nothing without you. We come saying, Lord, touch hearts and minds that not only be hearers, but be doers. And as we do these things, know it, we do it unto you. It's not by form or fashion, but Lord, at all times, we want to give you all the glory and all the honor. As I decrease, that your word increase, that it draws someone to realize that they need Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We say amen and thank you. Amen. I ask you to pray with me as I go forth 
allow the Lord to use me. And it is not by man that I'm up here, but by God's choice. I used to wonder uh, how would I ever react if I had to get in front of class. Never thought I was going to be in front of someone. And I see God say, I'll, I'll make you leaders. I'll make you teachers. I'll make, he said he will. So I don't know why people are waiting for people to reward them by saying, oh, you're doing a good job. You know, oh, yeah, uh, we're going to give you appreciation. It's good to do those things. But God was saying, uh, and it's only right, but he said, you put me first. So when I start looking at Joshua, and I, <laughs> I don't know why a lot of times they tell you to meet, learn the, the books of the Bible, and they said, don't forget the first five books of by Moses. So we used to have to learn it by that way. Right after the last five, then they said, it's Joshua. Because something happens. Each time give a, God give a book, it's something that happened at that time. So I, I looked and I said, well, the study that we did uh, back when the House of Prayer was first started, um, <laughs> it said to us, uh, the teacher at that time said, so, because someone dies, that don't mean God died. That don't mean you stop. Because the God we serve lives. And he lives forever. So who you should be following? The one that stopped? Or the one that's going to live forever? Forever. 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 And so uh, they said, it's good that God give us people that study the word of God. But remember your source. It's Jesus. That's your source. They don't be running back every time something happens to Sister Winston because I got no power. Mm -hmm. Unless it come from God. I can pray with you, but it's better if you learn to pray for yourself. Because yes, right. you know more about what you want to ask God. Somebody else might emphasize and add some to it. So you know what you need. So I, when I got ready, I thought about how this here particular part of the scripture was talking about really believers. Not, not really believers, but the ones that love God. And they was the Jews. We get all caught up not knowing who God was talking to. So a lot of times people don't realize it. We are not supposed to go in the street <coughs> and bring nobody in and put them in no position. Mm -hmm. That belongs to God. Right. And how would you know? He said, because if you abide in me, you can ask what you want. So we go into where, if you're going back and looking at scriptures, uh, before we get to uh, the 22nd, we see so much is happening because they tell us this person we're talking about, Joshua, was born in slavery in Egypt. Somebody had a start somewhere. You was born into this world. And God told you how you was born. With evil in your heart. Sin. You are born into sin. I like how he let us know when we get to this 22, 22nd verse, that people, a lot of people had the same name back there in that time. But it says, this Joshua was a leader in the military. He grew up to be, he was born in Egypt. Here it tells us that before we get where we at now, they're saying that Moses, their leader, had died. And they tell me they moaned for 30 days, but it was a time for them to move on. Nothing of God dies when a man dies. 
nothing. Be of good courage. The 22nd verse starts. Joshua called the Reubenites <coughs> and the Gadonites and the half tribe of Manasseh and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Ye have not left your brothers these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God has given rest unto your brothers, as he promised them. Therefore now return ye and get you into your tents and unto the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side of Jordan. But take diligently he to do the commandments and the law, which Moses the servant of the Lord charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went into their tents. Now to the one half of the tribe of Nassim, Moses had given possessions in Bashan, ba ba but unto the other half they are, gave Joshua among their brothers on this side of Jordan westward. And when Joshua sent them away, also unto their tents, then he blessed them. And he spake unto them, saying, Return with much riches unto your tent, and with very much cattle, and with silver, and gold, and brass, and with iron, and with very much raiment. Divide the spoils of your enemy with your brothers. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and half trial of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go unto the country of Glee, Galilee, to the land of their possession, where are they was possessed, according to the word of the Lord by the hands of Moses. And when they came unto the border of Jordan, that are in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see to. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben, and the children of Gad, and the half tribe of Manasseh, have built an altar over against the land of Canaan, in the border of Jordan at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh, Shiloh to go up to war, war against them. And the children of Israel sent unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to half tribe of Manasseh, and to the land of Gilead. Phoenix had the son of Elzar, the priest, and with him ten princes of each chief house, a prince throughout the tribe of Israel. And each one was head of the house of their fathers among the thousand of Israel. And they came unto the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, and to the half tribe of Manasseh, and said to the land of Gilead, that they spake with them, saying, Thus said the whole congregation of the Lord, what trespass is this that we have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord? Therefore, we said, let us now prepare to build an altar and not for burnt altar nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you and our generation after that we might do the service of the Lord before him without burnt offerings and without sacrifice and without peace offering, that you children may not say to our children in time to come, ye have no part in the Lord. Therefore say we that it shall be when they should say to us and to our generation in time to come that we may say again, behold the pattern of the altars of the Lord, which our Father made, not for burnt offerings, 
are not for sacrifice, but it's a witness between us and you. God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord and turn this day from following the Lord to build an altar for burnt offering. For meeting offer or for sacrifice besides the altar of the Lord, but God that is before the tabernacle. And when Phoenix the priest and the prince of the congregation, head of the thousand Israel, was with him, heard the word that the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the children of Manasseh spake, it pleased them. And Phoenix the son of Elzar, the priest, and unto the children of Reuben, and to the children of Gad, and to the children of Manasseh, this day we receive that the Lord is among us, because we have not committed to transpass against the Lord. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hands of the Lord. And Phoenix, the son of Elzar, the priest, and the prince, returned from the children of Reuben, and from the children of Gad, and out of the land of Galilee, and to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought there a word again. And things pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God, and did not intend to go up against them in battle, to destroy the land where the children of Reuben and Gad dwelt. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called that altar Ed, for it shall be a witness between us and the Lord is God. May the Lord bless the reading of his word sanctified my heart that we don't sin against him. When I looked at it, it said, understanding how we supposed to reconcile to one another, but also how we supposed to handle a situation when it comes up. We see here in the beginning that, um, like I said, Moses had died in jail. Joshua had came forth. If you remember when they, when, um, Moses sent out spies and to see about the land, the land that God had given. When he sent them out, uh, only two came back with the right report. All of them had a report, but only two came back with the right one because they remember what the Lord said, not what man said or what it seemed like. But it tells me, as I kept reading, and, and I like how it says, if you keep on down and you keep on seeing how they're going through Joshua, how it's telling us that it was 12 tribes, but you keep hearing them saying two and a half. That's because on one side of Jordan, they, they, you'll, you'll see that one tribe split, Manasseh. So you had half on the east and half on the west. So as we go for, you see, they was came together to fight the battle, to get the Canaan land. Now that, that Canaan land was promised to them, but they couldn't sit down and just walk in. They had work to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you got work to do here. When you come to Christ, you got work to do. It's not about what man tell you to do, but what God tell you to do. He said, use your hand. In fact, whatever you find your hands to do, do it. Amen. So here we see that uh, Henders came, but did they give up? They went back to God each time something came up. They went back to God. And that's what you have to do. This is a story. Really, each one of the story has a principle. For us today, it says that Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have kept all of Moses, the servants of the Lord, <laughs> commanded you, and have obeyed my voice and all that I commanded you. God, we have an upper shepherd, and we got a shepherd down here. Okay. You obeyed both because they was in unison. Moses and God. He took his orders from on high. And when Moses went down in the grave, he had a leader already. That's what I like about it. He had a leader already. Many churches I have been in, I see them. They sent off for ministers. 
they, they uh, take letters. But is anybody in the meantime, why they doing that? Was they praying? I don't know, but I was. You can only speak for yourself. Amen. You got to pray for what you want God to do for you. So it says the leader was already there. It was time to go forth. Here, they had no doubt who was the leader. But it was told to them way back in Deuteronomy. It was told to them who the leader would be. It's not enough for us to have teachers up here and then have people sitting out there and don't know God has a teacher ready to be taught. You're not going to be here always. So you're supposed to be at least letting people know where they stand. I found out that a lot of assuming starts. And how can you stop assuming? It's communication. I remember back when we started uh, this place, we was on Jefferson. And the first thing they said to us is that we want you to study it prayerfully, but be led by the Spirit to do whatever you're going to do. And I used to wonder why this person was doing things and that would turn to doing that and I said, well, I don't know nothing but the help. And I found the help was great. You have to remember to today is the day the time go up. <laughs> yeah, you help us uh, tell you information that they don't went through some things and know it. And it helps you. I heard a lot of people saying you've got to watch what you hear. Because God told us whatever we hear, we supposed to search it out. Don't go running telling something you ain't searched out. Here we found out this caused a lot of problems in the church. I looked at, he's talking about gossip. <laughs> I like how this here let us know how when God allowed Joshua to do what he did, it said, a lot of people like to look at your age and say, you can't do this and that. But these people was 110, 80. Don't tell them what God can't do. You don't tell me until you be looking at But if God put them there, he said, I'll put He put Joshua there. And it tells me in his old ways, he died of 110. <laughs> you, you don't know how long God going to use somebody. But in the meantime, they kept listening to what Joshua was saying. And, and he didn't come in saying, uh, look, I want you to do this, and I got to do that. He said, you kept all. He came and talked with him. All that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. In other words, Moses was giving them the army, but they, he was getting it from the Lord. So when you do something against a child of God, I mean, remember you're doing it against the Lord. So you want to be careful how you handle things. Go back to the Lord. He said, in seven years, they was out. These tribes, they got together, and they worked together. They know they had the can of land in front of them, but it was they got to fight to get that land. A lot of people said, stand still and see what God has done. Yes, but in the meantime, a, a, a soldier's on the move. So we see the soldiers now under Joshua, was under Moses. And he tell them how God told him, y'all work together. And you go away. And say, now they, had to, they had got one part of, that's why we were reading, talking about Jordan River on that side. They was had done fault and got it all settled. Enemy wasn't coming in over there. If it did, they was quiet. So he said, now we got to go on the other side. So come and help us. Help us fight this battle. That's where the churches, when they see a church in trouble, 
They're supposed to come over and help. Help. What help do you need? Not come over and take over, but come over and what do you need? Here it tells us that they got together and they went for seven years fighting. They left their families and went over. The other ten went over to help them fight the other part of the land. And when they got over there and they all fought and they said that everything got settled, a promise came behind them. When you get through fighting on this side of Jordan River and you cross over, that's when you get over. We talk about the river, we talk about home now. When you cross over, everything gonna be settled. But he is saying they was talking about here on earth. They had to go back to their families, families they had left. They didn't just say, no, no, everybody going with, but they took the one that was souls. And that's what the church is supposed to have, souls. <coughs> those that want to actually fight the fight of God. Not man's way. No scheming, no conniving, but to stand on what God said, fight. Trust him. So they went over. And after, like I said, they got settled, they, they already was made promise. Whatever they had a war, they would take, they called spoil. All the good stuff, they would take. If I help you fight a battle, shouldn't I have part of the spoil? So they said, we all work this thing together, so we're going to all share this thing. So it was divided among them. And every time they met, they had a representative for each one of their tribes. I like how he kept on telling them about what to do for the Lord. I like how when it got to this, they said, before you leave, we want you to exhort what you did for the Lord. But we want to bless you with some of the spoil. So here you see, I like he said, I'm going, you all were leaving, going on the, on the other side of Jordan. But take careful heed to do the commandments and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. To love the Lord your God, to walk in his way, to keep his commandment, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away. Mm -hmm. And they went to their tent. Yeah, I used to love to say, we so engaged to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember one another in prayer, to aid one another in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy and feeling, Christian courtesy and speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We were more engaged that when we move from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. That's the same thing that Joshua is telling me. You don't separate but just keep your mind and focus on what God said. I like how he said we're going to be helpless to one another. Go love one another. That's God. I remember talking with my friend of mine and she said, Danny, birthday coming up. And I said, I don't know. I got to go check my paper. And she said, well, my birthday is the 10th and here's the 13th. So then I called him. He said, when you talk to Red Marshall? I said, I just got through talking and she told me something. And he said, yeah, he, he, they said, you know, his mind goes to come, but he was stern. Well, she, she's a, uh, I'm, I'm older than her. I said, you sure? And uh, he said, yeah. And he said, my birthday was so and so. He starts hearing about older people in Lackawanna. They think most of the time when they talk to me, I came from Lackawanna, but not so. And, Anyway, he go, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, and he died, so and so. I said, you know what? I said, you don't hit on something. I don't really know that, so I'm just going to listen. 
But you know, it did my heart good to hear him reminding that mind, that memory coming to him. I said to him, I don't know, but uh, I check it out. I said, I know Marsha Hill's the chest. I know that. And I said, but I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know. And so I thought about it. You got to take heed you know, to what people said and investigate, you know. So I'm talking and he said to heed to God's word. God said, loved one, do you know just a moment to stop and talk with someone when they've been home by home and let them reminisce to you to give them another day of living. It, it renews them. So it said they had gone and they don't fall and the, the possession had been, they already don't split it up. And he's telling them, okay, you can go back home now. You got husbands and, I mean, you got nieces and nephews and wives and children. So, you know, when you go away from home, <laughs> you know, they can make do. But it's certain things they wait for you to come back to do. So they weren't going home empty handed. And said, so he gave them not only an exhortation, but a blessing. It's a blessing when you come to the house of the Lord and we see you. We said we heard you were sick and to see you, that's a blessing to us to see you come back to the fold, because a lot of people don't make it. I like how he ordered and commanded them how to take care and to hear God, that they should give love to one another. Never forget that you're helpless to one another. He didn't uh, want them to get all mixed up in what other people were saying. God fixed his soul. Things that happen to us is for a reason. Here he saw, told them to walk obedience to God, not what man don't set up, to what God has set up. Here I like how he gives a, a picture of a proper relationship to God. See, serving God, you'll find out you need to hold fast to what God said. And build a relationship means you got to in time with God. And I used to thought, oh, I, I do. I read in the morning. I read in the afternoon. But he said time. And that means involving your heart, and your, your, your home, your school, your work. All of that is what takes to, we have a relationship. It's like you don't meet me this year and then don't see me no more till next year. I mean, a lot of people don't even know what's the first book of the Bible. At least you should know the first and the last. You know, it, no, it just it takes time. You got to spend time with him to know what's in that book. Well, if somebody start talking about the beginning, you need to go where it, it is, the beginning is. So here it says, Joshua told him to delight in the Lord and cling to the Lord. That came in with the sharing, not, uh, oh, I'm going to get this, and they fight over uh, what they don't spoil and stuff. Mm -mm. When it's given, it's given according to God's word. I ain't going to tell you, uh, people ain't going to start talking about, you, you should give me, <coughs> oh, I should be here and then. But you got to make sure that you in right standing with God. Joshua went to God for his direction. So here, I see Joshua after he blessed him and and send them away, like they say, like anything, when you send your children away, you be thinking, oh, what they gonna run into? Is, you know, if they gonna have enough food? Is he gonna get with the wrong choir? You know? So it tells us that this two and a half trial, start thinking about, oh, we gonna go in Shiloh, they got the way you come and worship God and get, but pretty soon, it's some about, like when people come to church here, they forget it's the other people out there that's this fold. And they be talking about our house, out there. Yeah. So he says, so the, the tribe said, well, our generation gonna die out. What they gonna say, we ain't got no part? Well, we don't fall for this? So he said, they remind him that we do have a part. We wanna do altar. Well, there came what they talk about he said, well, I heard. 
<laughs> and, and for for our standards, we are good for. I heard. <laughs> I saw. Guess what? They said. He. <laughs> it, the message got out to the other tribes. Manasseh, Gad. Yeah, they building an altar. I don't seen it. So here we see it started out just being a symbol, but somebody start assuming. <laughs> start getting what they thought. The Bible tells us you gotta order against the person, go to the person. But I don't find that like that. They'll take it to the congregation. But they come to you face to face. They come to you if only go to anybody else. <clears throat> this here is showing us how we should handle. All this here saying, <laughs> they didn't go back to God, but they had someone that was a leader. When they heard what was on, they went to the tribe. Here, they was telling me that this altar was very impressive. It was constructed in the land of Canaan. It was an altar, truly. Practice this could render as visible to anyone that's journeying in the homeland. They would see it. <coughs> the phrase to use to describe the altar is similar to that used to describe the burning bush. Thus, it would attest the tension of passerby. You see a burn, a big bush just keep on burning and never go out. It gets your attention where this altar was built. So we draw the tension. And I I know this, that a lot of people are saying they look at churches when they go to them, oh how nice the pews are. And I said, oh boy, them people got some nasty attitude. You know, it's nice over there. They, they, Assume, but it's somebody in there that loves the Lord, all of them ain't the same. So I looked at this, he was talking about how they constructed the, the um, altar. They said, and how they learned of it. They didn't learn about it from a leader, it's from passerby. You got a lot of people comes and they hear things and before you know it, they in it. And they doing more than the people in it in the church when all the time they need to handle inside. You go inside out. God works inside out. Here, I like how they kept talking about the hearsayers. You know, you got a lot of people that got a lot of education, but it tells us that personal direct confrontation is made to the person. The children of Israel sent Phoenix and some said Phoenix has. The son of Elzar, the priest, he led the group because he was in authority. He was the high priest over all of Israel, including the two and a half on the east side. He, um, he not only had the authority, but he also had the heart of a wise shepherd. He wanted to correct the error to protect the people of God and to drive out dangers. Don't you know the best thing to drive out danger is communication? Not I said, he said, they said. Direct communication. Amen. That's how you break down all walls of the devil. Because his thing is for you not to know. Mm -hmm. That's why he don't want you to read your Bible. Because he don't want you to know. Mm -hmm. So I looked at this here and I said, <coughs> this, this is a powerful and here it says, Israel react according to God's character. Yeah, it is a rumor. I hear saying, they said, but he brought it to, to, the, to the group, to the tribe, all of them. Not two, not the ten, because they the most. We can outvote them, but to the group. Here it tells us, as you keep, you need to really go back and read it. This is a powerful powerful lesson but he said that in the hearsay here 
how we got to react, how God wants us to different things that's happening. Not the way our feelings, our emotions, but the way God said. Here, when uh, Phoenix brought the accusation against the Eastern tribe, it says, Clearly, the leadership of Israel thought that the altar at Jordan represent a rival place of sacrifice and worship to compete with God Tabernacle, which was at Shiloh. Here, they, everybody thought, oh, they, they, they setting up their own thing, and they doing it their way. But they didn't have, they didn't have all the necessary information about it. They was going on what they assumed. I kept remembering how uh, someone came and said to me, you know, uh, uh, Sister Winston, uh, you're causing confusion. And, uh, and the first thing that came to my mind, in what way? Because, see, you can do something if people misunderstand why you're doing it. And this is what happened. They misunderstood why they was doing it. So I like how when God allows you to actually do something and people don't understand. He said, by and by you would understand it. I said, they said assumption leads to accusation. That means you ain't got all the facts. Commonwealth, <laughs> but communication <laughs> leads to clarification. God wants you to be clear in everything he tells you to do. So he said, be careful not to judge other people more. Get the facts. Amen. I like how he said, be truthful, honest in your communication. Go face to face. You can't read my mind and I can't read yours. That's true. He said, be gentle in your approach. Go to Ephesians 4.32. Be watchful, but prayerfully. It's, it, let me know that the way they handle they used gentle. They went face to face. They didn't leave God out of it the whole time they was doing it. But I like how I was listening to uh, New Bethlehem Baptist Church in Alabama. And uh, they said, he said, most of the time when you hear say, <laughs> you're going to hear, I said, they said, but when someone come with you and said, do you know they did so-and-so? I said, do you mind me quoting that you said that? <laughs> and I said, uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> they, they stuttered. Then you say to them, uh, so if you don't mind, because yeah, I didn't see this, you saw this, you know, and usually they back off. And then you can ask them, what evidence do you have? Who told you that? All right. When they don't want to give you that information, you know it's not of God. Because God said, go to the person. And, he, and they believe it or not, I'm going to tell you exactly what he told me. Pray before you go. Because sometimes God will reveal, it's to you. All right. <laughs> so here Joshua, standing in the gap. Yet God had different ones. In place. Joshua didn't bring this together. Been in this. Because he had a thought. See, God choose who he wants and puts it in place for a reason. I like how when I'm looking at it, I said, yeah. <laughs> so consider your thoughts. Consider what you're saying. Consider that you're working for God and not of yourself. Man. Consider that if you want something to work out, you got to go back to God. He got to be in the midst of it. If you see somebody praising God, then you to praise. Not try to set up your own praise. Oh, oh, no. He's singing it. That's a song about praise. I'm with you. You know, I, not that I have a good voice, but I know what he done did for us. And I know that that's a praise. Yeah, Joy the River. I'm bound to the cross. I'm working on that. Yes. And when it gets settled, I'm going home. To be with my Jesus 
And that's good news to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't care what the world going to do. I'm sincere. But I'm going to tell you, my care is what brings me. Because when he calls me, it ain't going to be on what Sister Prince did. That's right. It's going to be on what Sister Winston did. It ain't going to be what on Chrissy did. Right. Chris and Duke got to stand for himself. You got to stand for yourself. Right. So when I looked at this lesson, it kept saying, be watchful, but be prayerful. Be careful about how you handle things, because you want God's character. We're getting ready. The war is on, but we got to fight it together. Amen. I might not can do what you can do. But you won't know what I can do until I get there and say, I can't do You can't speak of me. Because God can use that child back there. Like I said, they got a 12-year-old now preaching. And boy, Chris had just found him one day. We've been following him. God yeah. used him. Whosoever will. And you hear this boy and you say, oh, he must be in a religious family. But then he, he come out with things like, I got in an accident. Angels lift me up, call Christ up. I'm headed to preach here. And he said, I came here to testify. No more. He said, I know God saved you for this purpose. This day. God saved you for this day. And this person. Call on him. Why you came here? Because see, someday you get so your mind here, your, your thoughts might not be. But the God we said, he said, I know your heart. Yeah, and that's so important. So when I looked at this here, I said, Lord, what I must do to be saved? Because I want to be ready when he comes. Amen. Joshua and them didn't wait till the time came for them to serve. The whole time they was working on it. They was getting the soldiers ready, putting on their helmet of salvation. And you got to know your helmet of salvation first. You got to know who brought you, who's going to keep you. You got to know this. You got to know that you got no good thing in you unless the Holy Spirit is leading. Amen. I don't care if you say, yo, you ain't, you know, you ain't got no good thing in you. You say, yes, but with Christ, I do. Righteousness. So I said, choose who you will serve this day. Believe that he died. They buried him. But he got up. And I want you to know, he lives. And he want to live inside of you. Tell somebody. He loved you. I'm so glad he loved me. So glad he took the time out and molded me. And still molded me. He, he's the one that molds. Yeah. I can just bring my child up into what I think. But don't you know, I can't mold that child like God. So whatever I do, I need to put him in the hands of the Lord. So when I see somebody don't know how to receive it, I find out that when nobody else would do it, God will leave me. Put that right hand of fellowship on. They said, give me a grip like you love me. And oh, they got a strong grip. They mean it. You see somebody just drop the hand like that? Ain't no love in it. But when you grip my hand, <laughs> You sin, I care. I care what you just said to me. It's something about the brotherly love that God give us that these people knew because they, we got a battle to go on, y'all. Yes. And the battle got to be fought with the sword what God gave you, yes. not what somebody else did. Because we are headed to a better place. And you won't get there any kind of way. Let God lead you. All the way. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you all the way. Oh!